And this is not unique to Ford. You look at companies like Uber and Lyft, they've been around since 2010. They've never made a dime. None of the micro mobility companies have ever made any money. Lyft lost $1.6 billion in 2022, a half a billion more than it lost in 2021. Uber lost $9 billion in 2022. These companies are losing money even though they are relatively asset light firms. When it comes to their core ride hailing and delivery businesses, Uber and Lyft don't own any cars. Mercedes Benz was the first car brand to introduce an L3 system. It was very ex expensive. They still had to do it with partners like NVIDIA, but they really developed their own solution. And when they gave their financial targets for the solution, it, it actually isn't creating a big financial windfall for them. They're looking at this as really primarily a tool to differentiate their product uh, as a product enhancement. Mary Barra, who is the chair and CEO of General Motors, has been very publicly committed to the cruise effort. And I think as long as she is in that position, that will continue to be the case. But she's also 62 years old. Cruise CEO Kyle Vogt has said their target is to have a billion dollars in revenue in 2025. Nobody from Cruise or from GM has talked at all about what the timeline is for profitable business. By the end of the decade, we don't expect more than five to seven companies doing this stuff globally. I'd long expected that Argo would probably be one of those companies. Turns out, or not. To give you an idea of how far off profitability is in self-driving cars, consider that so many of the businesses, ride hail, scooters, shuttles, bike share, that fall under the umbrella of mobility are all money pits. Ford has entered and exited several mobility businesses over the last several years. It bought scooter rental company Spin for $100 million, then sold it to a German company in 2022. It acquired Chariot, a shuttle service, in 2016, and then shut it down in 2018. It launched GoRide Health, a non-emergency medical shuttle service, and then shuttered that. As revenues from Ford's automotive business grew, Ford Smart Mobility, the division established in 2016 to invest in these types of businesses, actually shrank in 2022 over the previous year. And this is not unique to Ford. You look at companies like Uber and Lyft, they've been around since 2010. They've never made a dime. None of the micro mobility companies have ever made any money. Lyft lost $1.6 billion in 2022, a half a billion more than it lost in 2021. Uber lost $9 billion in 2022. These companies are losing money even though they are relatively asset light firms. When it comes to their core ride hailing and delivery businesses, Uber and Lyft don't own any cars. Running a fleet of self-driving cars requires, of course, first developing the technology. But you also have to manufacture or acquire the vehicles. You need to fix, maintain, and clean cars and the specialized equipment on them. Keeping the sensors clean is crucial to keeping the vehicle functional. You also need to devote time, space, equipment, and staff to regularly charging or refueling them. If a passenger leaves something behind in a robo-taxi, or somebody gets sick in the robo-taxi, or somebody lights up a cigarette, the company has to somehow detect that and resolve the situation. It's not as simple as, yeah, we'll get rid of the driver and we'll eliminate you know, most of our cost. No, it's, it's not anywhere remotely close to that simple. Ford has decided to focus on L2 and L3 driving systems in the near term. In March of 2023, Ford said it was creating Latitude AI, a project focusing on these efforts. Mercedes-Benz was the first car brand to introduce an L3 system. It was very ex expensive. They still had to do it with partners like NVIDIA, but they really developed their own solution. And when they gave their financial targets for the solution, it, it actually isn't creating a big financial windfall for them. They're looking at this as really primarily a tool to differentiate their product uh, as a product enhancement. The advantage with these types of features is that they are already available and can be packaged often as options on cars these automakers are already selling. Marketing them doesn't require a whole new business model. We know that business model well. We can execute that business model well. Maybe that's how we get to autonomous vehicles in 10 or 15 years without every car company going broke in between. 
VW has not given up on autonomous driving yet. As of March 2023, the company continued its partnership with Mobileye, an Israeli autonomous vehicle technology company. It was also working with a company called Horizon Robotics in China that makes high-performance processors and computing platforms. It's continuing a self-driving delivery van project using its new ID Buzz electric van. Other rivals are still working on Level 4 autonomy. Waymo, Cruise, and Baidu, a Chinese company operating primarily outside the U.S., are three that stand out. Waymo started operating a driverless ride-hailing service first in Phoenix and then San Francisco. In October 2022, it began expanding to Los Angeles and hit 1 million rider-only miles in January 2023. GM's Cruise launched driverless taxis in San Francisco in June 2022 and later announced plans to expand to Austin and Phoenix. The startup also hit 1 million driverless miles. Also near the top is Mobileye, an Israeli company that makes technology for autonomous cars rather than the cars or services themselves. Their business model is very different. Mobileye has their core driver assist business, which is profitable. Their plan is not to own and operate the fleets of automated robo-taxis. They want to provide the technology. Among the companies at the next level, the contenders, is Zooks, owned by tech giant Amazon. The two companies that really don't care about the realities of what's happening, like, oh, this is going to be really expensive, is Google and Amazon. Why? Because they're enormous. And they can have pet projects that go nowhere. GM, however, is a car company, like Ford. It spent $2 billion keeping crews afloat in 2022, a 58% increase over 2021. Mary Barra, who is the chair and CEO of General Motors, has been very publicly committed to the cruise effort. And I think as long as she is in that position, that will continue to be the case. But she's also 62 years old. Cruise CEO Kyle Vogt has said their target is to have a billion dollars in revenue in 2025. Nobody from Cruise or from GM has talked at all about what the timeline is for profitable business. Abul Samid says for what these services charge, about as much as a conventional ride hailing service, Cruise would need to hit 400 million revenue generating miles to reach $1 billion in revenue. Assuming the cars are carrying, paying passengers or goods for about half of a 20-hour operational day, the rest set aside for charging, maintenance, cleaning, etc., Cruise would need to have 5,500 to 6,000 robo-taxis running by 2025 to hit that target. By comparison, New York City has about 13,000 yellow cabs and 100,000 ride-hail vehicles. So it's certainly feasible that they could get that billion-dollar revenue number, but it's probably not going to be anywhere close to profitable. In the meantime, they could lose the support of their backers without much warning, and the pool will shrink. By the end of the decade, we don't expect more than five to seven companies doing this stuff globally. I'd long expected that Argo would probably be one of those companies. Turns out they're not.